main thing is to the to the to the people of Afghanistan and above all to the families of innocent people who lost their lives in that uh, in that incident our sincere regret defense secretary ash carter expressing sincere regret concerning the accidental bombing of a doctors without borders hospital in afghanistan that left 22 dead over the weekend the pentagon announced it's going to offer condolence payments to the injured civilians and families of those killed by that american airstrike but a lot of folks still ask how and why could this happen for more insight we welcome from newsmax new york retired air force lieutenant colonel mark mccurley the colonel was on the drone team that killed Anwar al laki and he was also the first pilot to locate famed Navy SEAL Marcus Luttrell, best known as the lone survivor. Mark is also the author of the new book, Hunter Killer, Inside America's Unmanned Air War. We should note at the outset, Mark, as we welcome you in, you're a guy who physically has climbed uh, into a cockpit and piloted planes in addition to uh, this kind of uh, predator piloting. I'm just curious your take on what happened at the hospital uh, manned by Doctors Without Borders. Hey, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, that's certainly a, an unfortunate incident. Uh, one of the things I, I think uh, the public should know is whether we're flying a Predator or a fighter or any other aircraft that drops bombs, there's a very strict set of rules of engagement that the military follows. And they, and they rigorously exercise those rules of engagement in order to make sure that they hit the right target. Some targets require higher level approval authority, such as politicians or general officers, as is the case with the, the Predator. Well, you, you talk about getting that okay from general officers or lawyers. I'm curious because in your book you offer some unique first-person accounts, including, now I want to make sure I have this straight, you had a fix on Osama bin Laden, but you were told to stand down. Can you give us some specifics of what went on? Well, you know, that's certainly kind of a standout point in the, in the book. Uh, this happened in 2004, and... When, usually when we travel to targets, some of our targets might be several hours away from our base. The airplane's not very fast. So we'll look at the ground and we'll look at what we can see as we go by, targets of opportunity. And we came across the gentleman flanked by guards walking through uh, the Afghani countryside. It looked exactly like the same countryside you saw in the videos that came out in 2004 time frame. It looked just like Osama bin Laden. We passed this up the chain, the intelligence staff, uh, agreed with our assessment that this was likely him. Uh, unfortunately, somewhere along that chain, where we, you know, just like what I talked about earlier with the rules of engagement, somewhere along the chain, they decided that it was not uh, worth going for. And it's worth noting that a couple of years prior to that, they had, you know, killed a farmer and his kids thinking that he was Osama bin Laden. So there was a little bit of reticence to take a shot at a bad target. Understood. It sounds like a fascinating read. I'm looking forward to it. Retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Mark McCurley in his new book, Hunter Killer, Inside America's Unmanned Air War. Now, let's take a look at what you've been writing us about on social media. A lot of comments on you uh, from you concerning the House Speakership. The first one tonight from Alvin, who writes in in a very simple way, <laughs> draft Newt for Speaker. Then Madeline checks in. She says, if you must have an insider, let it be Daniel Webster. But going outside makes the most sense on an interim basis. How about Tom DeLay or Newt Gingrich? This move would get the people, the business of the people moving and allow the dust from Boehner to settle. And finally, Jason checks in with this assessment. It's not just the GOP House that's coming apart. It's the party. My prediction is the House Speaker gig will go to Paul Ryan following a three to four day backroom broker deal. He doesn't want it, but he will take it. And Jason, I just got to tell you, if it comes true like that in a backroom deal with, uh, with Ryan getting it by rolling over the opposition behind the scenes, I think that would be bad news. Now that's my comment. You got some comments from me? I'd love to hear from you. Send those comments to me at NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. As always, my closing comments, stay brave, stay free, stay tuned.